I think the most important security benefits of the CTBT and of U.S. ratification of the CTBT uh, is to make sure that other countries don't test. And for the United States, that's especially important. And by other countries, let me be more specific, I think if Russia tests, there's a very similar situation to the United States. We've had lots of tests to worry about keeping their arsenal you know, safe and, and reliable. Uh, however, they've done a lot of tests. They have very sophisticated arsenal. On the other hand, it drops down significantly from there to China. So instead of 1,054 U.S. tests, 715 or so Russian tests, you drop down to 45 for China. So China has decided to have a minimal deterrent. In my opinion, in order to increase the sophistication substantially, China would need to go back and test. So I think it's really important for China not to test, to actually keep the world on a path towards disarmament and fewer nuclear risks. And then if you go down from China, you step down the next rung is India at six tests and Pakistan at six tests. I think both of those countries, again, to enhance the sophistication of their arsenal, they would have to go back and test. And so now it's important for the United States and Russia and China not to have India go back and test. And it's important for India not to have Pakistan go back and test, particularly uh, since the India-Pakistan situation continues to be quite a volatile situation. So in my opinion, the world would become a much more dangerous nuclear place if other countries tested, particularly China, India, Pakistan, and then going on to North Korea. I think all of those would be influenced to a large extent by the international pressures and by what the United States does. And so actually having a CTBT it's already worked for all of those countries, you know, except uh, for India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Uh, for India and Pakistan, it's worked since 1998. Uh, but it would really be important not to have them go back and, and test. And so U.S. ratification, in my opinion, puts additional barriers into place to not have those countries test. And that's both in U.S. national security interest and an international interest. Because <clears throat> I think all of those countries, with the limited number of tests they've had, if they wanted to increase the sophistication of their arsenal, let's say a submarine launch ballistic missile, <clears throat> for example, for India or, or for Pakistan, I find it very difficult to believe that they can do that on the basis of the limited test data they have so far. Uh, and from China also, you know, they've had 45 tests, they've used them, uh, I think from their standpoint, probably quite effectively. Nevertheless, they have a much, much smaller database than uh, US and Russia does, so they have greater limitations. So testing in their case can quite likely lead to increased sophistication of the arsenal, which will most likely then lead to a more dangerous nuclear situation. So it's important not to test in order not to make it a more dangerous situation in the world. In my opinion, the, the political environment actually right now is such that it is time to close the door. Now we've shut the door, you know, with the fact that we have a CTBT signed and we have a moratorium in place, but now we need to put the nails in the door in order to make sure that it stays shut. I think it's sufficiently verifiable <clears throat> in order to, uh, to ratify the treaty. And particularly with all of the advances that have been made in the technical capabilities for verification. And of course the CTBTO has played a major role uh, in actually being able to put on the ground the capabilities, you know, whether it's Kazakhstan or whether it's in many other places around the world. Uh, and they've demonstrated with the North Korean nuclear test that they're able to pick up very small nuclear uh, explosions. What will not be verifiable is if a country wants to do a very small nuclear test and decouple it in a cavity. And so other means will have to be found for how to do that, both from a standpoint of on-site on inspection regimes. We've done that for many, many other treaties, and so the question will be, 
is there anything that's left that's militarily significant, uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that could not uh, be verified? In my opinion, right now, the verification situation is such that I think it's sufficiently verifiable that the treaty can be, can be ratified. Well, that depends what you mean uh, by work. So in, in the United States, we introduced stockpile stewardship in the early 1990s when it was clear that we would most likely never be able to go back to testing. And yet, since the country still had nuclear weapons, people like myself, a scientist at Los Alamos and at that time director of Los Alamos, I still had the responsibility of keeping whatever weapons we designed and had in the field safe, secure, and reliable. That was part of my responsibility. And so we developed stockpile stewardship, which in essence is how do you take care of the nuclear arsenal without testing? Now that testing is gone, use all the other means that you can possibly do. So, and, and then the other aspect of stockpile stewardship was, can you actually make the problems, the difficulty of keeping weapons safe and secure and reliable without testing sufficiently scientifically challenging that you would continue to keep good people in the weapons program. And I know there are some people who don't want any nuclear weapons, and some people think the best way to do that is to not have good people in the weapons program. I think exactly the opposite is needed. If you're going to have these awesome weapons, you better have very good people who can ensure that they work if they are needed, but very importantly, that they don't work when you don't want them to. Uh, and so that takes good people. Stockpile stewardship has been very successful in being able to continue to pose significant scientific challenges. And so it's been able to keep very good people at the key laboratories uh, that have the responsibility uh, for keeping the nuclear weapons safe, secure, and reliable. And also, then I would say it's been successful that we've been able to certify that the nuclear weapons are safe, secure, and reliable annually without testing. And that's sort of the bottom line, is it successful? I, I do not agree with people who say that it's, been no, that it's been so successful that we have greater confidence in nuclear weapons today than we had in 1992. I think we have adequate confidence in the nuclear weapons, otherwise we'd have to say so when the annual certification comes. But the main aspect is can the directors of the national laboratories who have to certify the nuclear weapons or their counterparts in other countries like Russia or China be able to say that yes, those weapons are safe, secure, and reliable without testing at this time. And we've done it now since 1996 is when I signed the first such letter for Los Alamos and my successors have signed that letter ever since. So therefore we'd have to say stockpile stewardship has been successful in allowing us to do that. I know there's a lot of controversy associated with the CTBT. Uh, to, to me, the issue is really one uh, of what are the risks and what are the benefits of, of the CTBT. Uh, and so some proponents of the CTBT will say, there's no risk to stopping testing. Uh, since I'm a technical person and I had the responsibility of signing for those weapons, uh, I say I don't c concur with that. Uh, of course, you lose something when you don't test. The issue is, can you mitigate what you lose by other means? So stockpile stewardship is one of those. Uh, an enhanced surveillance program to make sure that you look at more of those weapons coming back uh, is, is another one. Keeping good people uh, associated with the nuclear weapons program is another way that you mitigate the potential problems. So yes, there are some risks. There are some things that you lose by testing. But the really important aspect is, do you gain anything by not testing? Uh, and there, the answer that I've given, the most important thing the United States gains is not to have other countries such as China, India, Pakistan, North Korea test. That's a significant benefit for the U.S. national security. If I were sitting in Russia, then I would say it's good for the Americans not to test and it's good for the Chinese, the Indians, Pakistans, North Koreans not to test. If I was sitting in China, I would say it's good for the Indians and the Pakistanis not to test. If I'd sit in India, it's really important for the Pakistanis not to test. Now, will the Pakistanis test? 
What keeps the Pakistanis from testing is the international pressure. And that pressure is increased if the CTBT is not only signed but ratified and then eventually enters into force. So the bottom line is you have to look at the risks and you have to look at the benefits. During the Cold War, testing was important. Uh, you know, I took over as director Los Alamos in 1986, uh, and we were still, you know, worried about the Soviets at that time. So it had been very difficult to have a comprehensive test ban. But after 1992, the world changed, uh, and now we need to reflect that. So today, you know, the benefits outweigh the risks.